This is the Agribusiness Report. I'm Tony St. James. We're joined today by the Honorable Senator Deb Fisher from Nebraska. She's a member of the House Ag or the Senate Ag Committee. It's great to see you. Today. Nice to see you, Tony. Thank you. Well, you would think as we approach holidays, things might slow down around uh, the Capitol, but they don't. It's been uh, a busy time here, and we're going to jump into that in a moment. But Let's talk about uh, back home in Nebraska. How are things? Well, things are pretty good. You know, we're, we're looking at a, um, a loosening of COVID restrictions somewhat. Uh, people's lives are getting back to normal. They're, they're um, able to be with their extended families, looking forward to Thanksgiving and Christmas and, and sharing that with families, but, but also using common sense. Um, by recognizing that, that COVID is still out there and it's something that, that we have to deal with and be, and be cognizant of. But um, yeah, Nebraskans um, are usually an optimistic people. You know, when, especially when you're in agriculture, you have to be uh, positive. You have to have that uh, hopeful outlook because uh, there's so many risks involved that you really have no control over. Uh, weather, markets, uh, anything like that. And now when I'm back in the state and I'm back almost every weekend and I say to Nebraskans, what's on your mind? And Nebraskans are worried about inflation. That's really been um, uh, something I hear about a lot. Uh, they're seeing costs go up every time they go to the grocery store. They're seeing uh, costs go up every time they fill up their tank with gas. It gets more and more and more expensive. And they're wondering how they're going to be able to, to juggle a, a family budget and meet the needs of their family and take care of their family uh, when, when you have this out of control inflation, it looks like. Uh, so that's put another risk out there for all Nebraskans, uh, but for ag families especially too. And in, if you look at the states in the Midwest, we're seeing a higher rate of inflation than the rest of the country. It's about 7.3% the consumer prices have increased. And uh, the rest, that's I think uh, about a point higher than the, than the rest of the country. So people are watching that and, and they're worried about it. And they want to be able to see some solutions, some changes happen here in Washington, D.C. that's gonna help them. Do you mind if I ask? Because uh, many times we, we identify those, those issues and you mention it, a solution. Are, do, we, do we have at our control, or in our toolbox, if you will, some solutions to deal with inflation? Oh, I think so. Uh, first of all, you look at energy prices. You know, when, when uh, President Trump was president, we were uh, energy independent. We were producing a lot of energy here in the United States, and now we're dependent upon OPEC again. You know, I remember the 70s. I remember uh, OPEC and uh, lines at gas stations and Jimmy Carter inflation. Um, I don't want to go back to that, and I feel we are going back to it. I think President Biden had a wonderful opportunity this last week when he had that virtual summit with President Xi of China, but he didn't talk about trade, which directly affects you know, the, the largest industry in the state of Nebraska and many of our states. He didn't talk about trade. He didn't talk about supply tra uh, chain issues. He didn't bring up ag issues. You know, Those were totally ignored, and those are uh, contentious issues that we have with the Chinese government. Those are issues where we should at least be beginning discussions and having a conversation and, and find a way forward uh, if we are going to address uh, those issues themselves, but also to help turn around this um, breakneck speed that we seem to be rolling towards uh, even higher inflation. Talk about inflation, if you can see it uh, at the grocery store, uh, especially when you get to the meat market side and, and you start looking at the prices of beef, there is a disconnect from that uh, producer level to what we see there. And 
uh, that, that really opens the door to talk about your work with cattle transparency and markets. What's happening? Yeah, well, I'm very excited uh, about our uh, Cattle Transparency Act that we have. As you know, Senator Grassley has worked for many years in, uh, in looking at how to be able to have more transparency, more information to livestock producers so they could make wise decisions when they are marketing their cattle. Uh, he's, had, he's had a bill up uh, that's called 5014 uh, for, I think, about 20 years. So I, I looked into what can we do to, to get a solution again, to get a solution, to, to find some way to uh, uh, get to our goal here of, of having those tools available for ag producers. So I uh, came up with a bill as well. And Senator Grassley and I, along with our co-sponsors on the Democrat side, Senator Wyden, Senator Tester, uh, we were able to come together this uh, last week, finally uh, nailed it down, and uh, we'll be introducing a bill today. That's a compromised version. It, um, it follows a lot of what I had in my bill. It uh, deals with regions to establish that base price on an 18-month average that USDA will come up with. It'll have a contract library, uh, just a, a number of things. And again, it's to, it's to provide that information to be more transparent and really to help, help producers have information so they can make well-informed decisions. You mentioned the producers. Is this uh, legislation that was really driven from that producer level because there is quite a bit of concern? Well, my family are cattle ranchers and we have a cow-calf operation. So uh, this bill is geared more toward the, the feeder part because of the tie into the packers. But in Nebraska, we have uh, all segments of the cattle industry. We have cow-calf, we have backgrounders, we have large and small feedlots, and we have three of the four big packers. I want every segment to succeed. I've said that all along. I've heard from uh, friends and neighbors for uh, many, many years who, who are upset. They're upset, they're angry, uh, they're worried about the viability of being able to maintain a family ranch to being able to pass on a ranch to the next generation. And a lot of that is the prices you receive. You know, look what you pay for a, a chuck roast in the store, which is now up over 29% over last year due to inflation. Uh, ranchers aren't seeing that money. Feedlots, they saw um, 800 to over $1,000 a head loss uh, for several, several months. Uh, so we want everybody to succeed, but you have to be transparent about the information that's out there. And so on a regional basis, we'll be able to have those cash sales that um, will help people understand what the market's doing in the state of Nebraska. What's the market doing in Iowa and Minnesota that's a region? What's the market doing uh, in Texas? Um, I want to know what's going on in Nebraska. You know, I, the Texas market doesn't affect, uh, affect us that much, but we, we need to understand what's going on in our market region. And this bill will do that. Uh, we have a, a good number of co-sponsors uh, who will be on the bill when we drop it today. And I'm just excited for it. It's a, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal that, um, as I said, Senator Grassley's been working on for years. I think the two of us teaming up uh, will really be able to keep this momentum going. And it also shows the importance of taking your time to make sure that you get the bill right the first time so you don't have to come back and revisit that. Yeah, you know, I introduced it uh, last session. And so we've gotten a lot of feedback um, from individuals and also from groups to be able to you know, make some changes there and trying to address that. So this was, this was done out in the open. You know, we, weren't, we weren't out there just coming up with an idea going, hey, let's do this. You know, I introduced a format last year, got feedback, working with Senator Grassley and Tester and Wyden, and, and um, I think that's the way you can come up with good legislation and good policy.
So good to see you. Thanks for your work yeah. here, and we wish you the best going into 22. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Again, it's the Honorable Deb Fisher, Senator from Nebraska, member of the Senate Ag Committee, on today's Agribusiness Report.